Let's consider pressure in a fluid with constant density and use this relationship here to try to determine how that pressure varies. We've seen this before. We expect that we'll end up with rho gh. Let's verify that we can do that. We'll separate this, move the dy to the other side, and then integrate both sides to get the integral from my initial pressure of p naught down to my final pressure of p. And that will equal the negative of the integral of rho g dy, starting from my initial y position of zero down to my final position of negative h. If we have a constant density, we can assume that this density times gravity is constant with respect to y, so it comes out of the integral and we just get the integral of dy becomes y, which we evaluate between the limits, giving us negative h minus zero. Multiplying that out, we get p minus p naught is equal to rho gh, or adding the p naught to both sides, p is equal to p naught plus rho gh, like before. That's good, it confirms that this newfangled way of doing things with this differential relationship works just like we'd expect. Now let's try using it to do something kind of interesting. Let's look at atmospheric pressure. This is where in the atmosphere, density of air decreases as we get really high and it increases as you get lower. So you can't use a constant density if you're trying to figure out how the atmospheric pressure is what it is down here. What we will do is we will try using the ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. This says the pressure times the volume of a gas is equal to the amount of moles of the gas times the molar gas constant times temperature. If you've taken a chemistry course, you might have seen this. If not, don't worry too much. This is an model that works pretty well for a number of cases. The assumption that goes into this is that the molecules of the gas have to be far enough apart that they're not really interacting with one another. That's the assumption. And then we get this proposed behavior. All right, we're going to substitute into here and use this relationship with Boltzmann's constant is equal to that molar gas constant divided by Avogadro's number. Bunches of fancy things going on here. You can figure out where this stuff comes from. I will tell you Avogadro's number is telling you the number of particles you have in a given mole of a substance. All we're using it for is to convert this ideal gas law into a slightly different form where we can say PV equals NKBT, where that big N now is the number of particles. That lets us say that for one molecule of air and a volume equal to mass over density, we can say that my pressure times mass over density is equal to KBT. The whole point of this was to try and get some dependence of pressure, or sorry, of density on pressure. That's why we did this. So this is the model we're using. If you don't understand how we got this model, that's all right. We're using this model for how the density of the air varies as you travel between different pressures in it. All right. So how does pressure vary with height now? We know how density relates to pressure. How does pressure vary with height? We can use our relationship that we had from before, dp dy is equal to negative rho g, and substitute in for my density, this relationship that depends on pressure. We get dp dy is equal to negative pm over kbt times gravity. And now we can try and integrate this. To do so, we have to move all of the pressures over with the dp and anything that has y over with the dy, but nothing has y here. So we'll divide P on both sides and multiply both sides by dy to get one over PDP is equal to negative mg over KBT dy. We can now integrate and in evaluating this integral, we'll integrate and assume that we have a constant gravity and constant temperature. Now this is probably the worst assumption in this whole garden path we're wandering down because we know that our temperature is colder up high and it's warmer when we get closer to the Earth. We also know that gravity is less when we're up high, and it's more when we get down to the Earth. But if we didn't make this assumption, we would have had to come up with some way of parameterizing these values and figuring out how they depend 
on position to be able to evaluate this integral. So we're making this assumption and we're going to try to sleep with our, our guilty conscience at night. All right, evaluating this integral now, we have the integral of one over PDP from our initial pressure P naught to some pressure as a function of position Y. And we will integrate one over PDP gives you the natural log of P, which you evaluate between your limits. And on the other side, the integral of dy just gives us y that we evaluate between our limits zero to y. Now we can evaluate those limits, ln of p minus ln of p naught is equal to negative mg over kbt times y. We're trying to get a function for how pressure varies with height. So we'll try combining these things using properties of logs, log, excuse me, logs with the same base, in this case, natural logs, log base E, you can combine by saying ln of P minus ln of P naught is equal to ln of P over P naught. And then we can exponentiate both sides. To try and get rid of our log, we're using an exponent with a, that has the same base as our log is. So E to the log base E will get rid of that log, leaving us with P over P naught on the left, and e to the minus mg over kbt times y on the right. We can multiply both sides by p naught, and we're left with our pressure dependence on position of this. Isn't that fun? So we were able to take some nonsense from the ideal gas law, make some assumptions that might be a little bit questionable, but end up with a model for how the pressure of the atmosphere might vary with our position in the atmosphere. 